the farm families of Cabot Cooperative are happy to be stuck in Vermont. Welcome to Stuck in Vermont, but to you by seven days. My name is Ava Salberger, and we're here in the southern Vermont town of Wilmington. You'll see tomorrow when the water clears, what's left of town, all the shops. It's been one month now since Tropical Storm Irene hit Vermont, and some say that no town was hit harder than the small picturesque town of Wilmington. Most of them are either retail gift shops or restaurants, um, catering to tourists as well as second homeowners and locals, and all of them sustain damage. There are other towns that were hit very badly. What happened to us that makes it particularly difficult for us is our whole economic center of our town is gone. And I think for us, because it's a small village and everybody was touched by it, it feels that much more substantial for us, I guess. From road washouts to homes being washed away to obviously the business community here was devastated, uh, but nobody was untouched by it. And uh, it's just tragic. I've never seen anything like it in my life. All of the town sewer and water went down, but also town police, town fire, town clerk, town offices were also all out of commission. The town offices were not functional and have now set up temporary quarters. We have not figured on a long-term plan yet, but clearly the short-term plan is gonna last a while. This is one of those events in your lifetime you will never forget. Just being here as it was happening, the evacuation that we all experienced, the coming together after it happened, and then just the amazing support everybody gave each other. There were just hundreds and hundreds of volunteers. And now it's not as clear what to do, so now skilled labor is, is needed more as opposed to clean up. And people have been working for weeks, and so the energy level isn't quite as high as it was during that first week, certainly. You watch TV and you watch the news and so forth, and you see the devastation that took place, but you, you can't really put it in perspective yeah. until you see it. But you know, once we drove up here and saw the devastation, it was... If I talk about my town now, I will blither endlessly and not be able to speak, so um, I'm ready to rebuild, I'll put it that way. This came so fast and just watching that water go higher and higher and higher on dots and just rushing by. I've never seen it smashing against the bridge and cascading over the top of it. There is a water marker actually from 38 and everyone always looks at that and says, oh, I can't believe, how could that have happened? How could there be that much water in town in 1938? And we're about this much higher. There was a log jam that was right up here against the bridge. It's a wonder the bridge didn't go down. Oil tanks, propane tanks, the sewer system broke, so who knows where all that was going? So the river is behind behind the trees there, and it curves, not only from the bridge coming down, rushing down Main Street, but also coming back up from this side of the street and sort of converging in the middle of Main Street. And we were trying to pull books up and put them on top shelves, and we'd moved our computers to the second floor. And when we smelled propane, we ran out our back door and up a steep hill. I got up um, pretty early Sunday morning and I just had a bad feeling. So I went over to our famous Dots restaurant, unfortunately one of the victims of the flood, and I probably ordered the last McDot sandwich they ever made. I was here as part of a group that was taking all of our land records out of that vault in the back of this room, moving them to the second floor. And first she told us, take everything below your waist upstairs. And then she said, no, nah, everything below your shoulder. Let's do it up to here. Let's evacuate the vault up to here. We probably rescued, I'd say, better than 95% of the town's records. She's one of the heroes. <laughs> I'm just a hurricane worrier, <laughs> but this time it paid off. <laughs> the name of this volume is Enrolled Militia, 1862 to 1864, Town of Wilmington. These are the pages from the very first volume of Land Records. These are my favorite pages in this book, and a picture of how their ear was notched was drawn into the book so that people would know whose cow was who. But the short answer is that if these records were submerged and inaccessible and there were no copies available, the transferring of property and the borrowing of money would come to a screeching halt. All of this, this whole village is on the National Historic Register. Norton House, I think, might be the oldest building in town. Some local people came up with this idea because they'd seen so many volunteers and so much great work happening. So that's what's left. 
of the building that sat in the back here. This shack over here is also part of the same property, so they have um, suffered a lot of damage. DOTS has been a local institution. It has sort of been the icon for Wilmington for a very long time. I was a regular. <laughs> <laughs> the official word on DOTS sort of changes day to day. I do not believe that they're going to rebuild. Somebody described it as our water cooler, if you will. It's where people gathered and talked and met. Anchor Seafood, which has now been open for a couple of weeks, their basement flooded, so they lost $25,000 worth of food. We were fortunate enough after the flood to get back open last Friday. This building burnt down uh, January 2010. We rebuilt the entire building, uh, historically correct, reopened last October. So this is our second disaster we've been through, though. This one really pulls at your heartstrings because we're watching all our fellow business friends really suffer. On the flip side, you have buildings that are gone, like this building is gone and the art gallery across the street is completely gone. It just picked up and went down the street. Across the street here is where Ann Coleman's gallery was. I've had quite a year, actually, in October. Um, I had another bookstore in Brattleboro um, called The Bookseller, which was destroyed in the Brooks House fire. And so, um, oh my God. yeah, it's been a long year. So. We're aiming for November. I've got to get my business back up and running, and it is day to day for me. Go across 42 inches this way. We're actually going to uh, do our best to make it more flood resistant. The water levels were uh, it was just right about here. That building has been everything from a livery stable to a gas station. That's what, a 170 year old building? Easily. We're putting a newspaper box back out in the center of town. The lady who runs the Crafts Inn came up today and said, you know, we don't have a box or a place to buy newspapers in the village anymore because our box got washed away in the flood. So their whole lower level mm -hmm. and the lower level of this building were just all gutted. And these folks need unbelievable kudos for bringing back their property to look like this. You can see where the water went. Wow. Those logs were definitely never there before. That's the watermark. That's the high watermark. Pickwell's barn, her place was just stuffed with merchandise. It's just gone. It's just gone. The rubble up and down this street. You will not believe the rubble. These oh. folks have had coffee and tea out and snacks out all throughout it, and anybody can come who needs a cup of coffee. There was nothing left in this building. Nothing. Can you imagine a lawyer's office with not a piece of paper in it? There was a yarn shop, which totally got blown out. There must have been hundreds of skeins of yarn all over the street here. And here's a whole lot of it caught up here. I think of the 40 businesses downtown, maybe seven had flood insurance. And so I would like you to get that yeah. sign. And it's just a great big piece of evidence that everybody got to work, got their stuff done. And you know, everyone's just been so great, the volunteerism and everybody's helping each other and this town is going to put itself back together. We need all the help we can get. Vermonters always come together in the face of adversity and, and you know this is as bad as it gets. If anybody could do it, this town can do it because we're one big family and we all look out for each other. We are open for business. We've got a packed house tonight. Unfortunately there's not too many other places open right now but we have some opening up this week. Opera Vu is going to be opening up this week. Oh there's a big hoopla. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that's going to be what keeps us going over the next few months as each business opens that we celebrate it. Foliage weekend is just around the corner. It's a, always been a really important economic time for us here in the village. We're up here on uh, uh, 25th uh, anniversary. It's such a beautiful, quaint little town. It's very nice. Everyone's been so friendly to us. Mm -hmm. and It will be better than it was before. There's a lot of work happening down here and there's a lot of enthusiasm to get town back because people really cherish their town. Oh, I'm optimistic about it. I think we have a chance to come back not just the way we were, but better than we were. We're going to have a commercial district that basically is going to have every building in it, at least on the ground floor, rebuilt. I'm really very optimistic. I, I, I got no choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's where amazing happens. Shows you how resilient they yes. are. Go Wilmington. Yeah. That's, that's what we're all about. Like the governor said, Vermont is open, so come visit. And together, we'll rebuild. We'll get stuck them out with you again, real soon. Come up, come up, help them <laughs> out, be a good person, do your do your part. It's well, not beautiful. only that, it's, it's, it's Leaf definitely. And, you know, it's just fun, quaint restaurants, typical Vermont, you know, homey fall cider, apples, all that fun stuff that you're looking for is, is here.
Well, you make the world's best cheddar, you ought to be proud of it. People can actually connect with you know, what they eat, here's the farm that it came from. We keep winning awards. We won every major award for taste in the world.